Same thing with uh, XRP. XRP back tested this. I got in exactly where I wanted. If it goes up and I get fucked, so be it. I honestly, whatever. But these are the marks where I see on the charts and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy it right when it hits it. And I did. And then as it popped up through the wick, I bought a little bit more. It's that simple. And I want to show you everybody, but I think I'm going to log in, which is fun. I have to use an authenticator and all this other crap anyhow because I'm afraid people will steal my stuff. Don't worry, I got to do another uh, two stops here. Hold on. And then I got to go to my email, so it's going to take me a second. One one six two two five. Oh, and I gotta redo my password now for my Google Authenticator. I like to reset it right away. There we go. Okay. So. So I go down the trades. So we're up 12.44% on the that part of the short. But as you can see, when I first started putting in, I put 51 here at 22x, and then 50 at the XRP for the 20x. And then I did a 20x for 11 bucks, 11.70 as it was starting to go up. That's up 8%. Did the same thing here. So, you know, I just started adding to the position a little bit. So that's what we got going on there. So in case anybody's wondering, that's just that's how it is, and we're going to continue to build it if we can. I would have preferred for it to go up a little bit more here, to be honest with you. Just a tiny bit so I could have built my position a tiny bit stronger. I might get that chance, though. But I really do want to thank everybody for tuning in. It means a lot to me that you guys continue to come here day after day. Now, enjoy this because for a few days I'm going to be gone. I got to go to the uh, convention in Texas. So, Vicath is sponsoring the eSports event in uh, uh, Arlington, Texas. And I'm one of two people that they asked to go in the USA to represent them. I'm a BitGuy ambassador. Um, so it's an honor. So it's going to be cool. I, had, I asked them if they would fly Julie out, and they said yes. So, And they reimbursed us already for the tickets in the hotel, which is awesome. So that's going to be interesting. So I'll be going live there. So I might be doing this at the same time, but I'll be going live from my mobile phone at the convention, I would imagine. And it'll be more like a live. We won't be on the charts as much. We'll be looking at the charts, but it might be a different perspective. So just be aware of that if you're used to this every day. Man, this is a solid rejection right now. Take a look at the uh, RSI real quick. Let's see what our technical traders are seeing right now. I mean, this technically has room to come down. If this plays down, this could come down hard. But these are this is where it could actually be. Uh, we need it to pull down past here if we want it to come down hard. Because this could be the fake M, but we just want it to continue. We don't want to. We don't want any bullshit here. We just want to continue on. See how the volume profile looks real quick. I mean, we don't have a lot of volume coming in. That's that's a huge, huge thing right now. XRP in the four hour really wants to cross here. I mean, this this looks bad right now. This just looks like we're getting ready to just dump. I know a lot of people want it to pump again one more time. I just don't see it. I don't. And I gave it a peace offering, so I know it's going to go down. It has to. Well, it doesn't have to.
I could see it coming up here again, though. Possibly. But I'm not going to sell it just to buy it back and pay the capital gain on other fucking bullshit. Yep, no, Valley, I could totally see that as well. It's just the more days that we lag here, we got the CPI coming out here, remember? So we got to remember that. And then with flat, or with, um, there's just a lot of things that are starting to culminate here. Billionaire Mike Novogratz says Bitcoin at 30K is unlikely. Uh, what the hell is he now? Was that another sneeze? I'm not gonna go Man. Is that another sneeze? Top crypto, my son sneezing. Yeah, it sounds like lots of sneezes. Might have to be getting off here a little early tonight. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I don't really see anything that really stands out. German exchange Nuri files for insolvency. So that's another crypto exchange. What's this one? So... I know I have people all around the country, so let's just read this real quick. German exchange Nuri, um, Nuri files for insolvency. Nuri, a, <laughs> oh, that that makes sense. Makes sense, Bailey. American Zebra, what's up? Clean the backyard and listening to your live. What a good, it is a good day. It is a good day. Uh, this is on uh, crypto briefing, but this is this news right here is on my um, my trading view app, and it's got a news section and it links to some of the major news sites. So this is on a crypto briefing. So the crypto exchange Nuri files for insolvency. Nuri, a German crypto exchange previously known as Bitwalla, ooh, that name I remember. I was going to say, I don't know Neary, but that makes sense. Has filed for insolvency due to poor market conditions. Neary filed for insolvency today, August 9th. Unlike some recently insolvent crypto platforms, Neary is not planning to deny services to its customers. Users will have guaranteed access to deposit and withdrawals. I would not be fucking putting any deposits in here. And Neary's services will continue. Guys, if you're in this, I would just take it out and send it somewhere else if they're actually going to let you. I would get the hell out of there. Also, Coinbase and Binance. Be very careful with it. It scares the hell out of me, especially Coinbase with that BlackRock partnership. Something don't smell right. Deposits cryptocurrency funds in Neary Pod Investments. Though Neary will keep existing accounts open, it is not accepting new customers and will not allow new accounts to be open. Okay, well, that's you're fucked. you got to take your money out of there. I doubt they're going to let you. Nary does not hold most funds itself. It maintains a partnership with the German fintech bank, Solaris Bank, <clears throat> AG, in order to manage its users. Euro deposits, likewise, Solaris Digital Assets, GMBH, SDA, manages the exchange's custodial crypto wallets, while Bank House, Von der Hill, handles Nary Pot funds. Nary says that its insolvency proceedings will help it develop a long term restructuring plan and asserts that it, this is the safest path forward for all our customers. The company cites market issues as its reason for insolvency, noting that challenging market developments and subsequent effects on financial markets made its insolvency finally necessary. More officially, it called 2022 a challenging year for fintech startups due to the aftermaths of the bullshit 19 pandemic and the market facts, market effects of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. The company also cited collapses in the crypto industry and solving Celsius and Terra as concerns. Other companies are also expecting solvency. Listen to this, guys. Issues including Holdnot, Bald, Babel Finance, CoinFlex, Voyager Digital already did, and Zipmax. 
Apart from a re relationship with Celsius that affected its Bitcoin interest account last month, Nuri did not state whether it had exposure to the broader crypto industry. Nuri ex operated under the name Bitwalla until it rebranded in 2021. It was originally lost in 2015 and was one of the better known crypto services in Germany at the time. So that's very interesting. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, none? So just good sneezes? Yeah, could have been. His room? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. So what does everybody think? I'm curious. I'm just curious what everybody thinks. I talk. I say a lot. I'm just curious. Do we think we're going to continue down? Do we think this bearish cross is something to worry about? That's about to happen in XRP. Do we feel like XRP is about to take a dump? Like this is a right shoulder about to break down and we're going to at least come to 32.61? Let's look at the one minute. Ooh. Ripple 531. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I actually, I I have a short position in right now, so. The J legs, I might be short in the live. We don't know. We don't know. But even if I lose money, I feel better in short positions. Because I, I feel weird being in long positions. Because if I was going long... Leverage trading, I would just feel like the market was going up, so I might as well just have all my money in. And not leverage where I can lose my position. I don't like the leverage by rule. That's why I bet leverage so small. I got just about $5,200 on BitGet, and I've got about, between all the trades, $110 in right now. But it's interesting, like if any volume comes in in the down direction, this could get ugly. I don't know if everybody's ready for the ugliness to start. I really don't. I think a lot of people really believe we've bottomed out, and I think it's going to be a kick in the nuts or in the teeth, you know, when it happens. And like I kept saying before, even if we go up to 40 or 50 cents, the likelihood is we're coming way down. You know, I don't I don't hide from what's happening. I try to make myself better in these situations. So you're looking at 3480 or 3512, just depending on how we play this out. Yeah, if there's any volume, that's why I'm looking at because if we're gonna come up, if we're gonna come up, you would think that first we're gonna have to come all the way down here. And maybe we could stop at 3630 and maybe bottom there as a a bearish Gartley. But right now, we're going to have to see if it, if it doesn't break out of this area and it holds here, I would consider selling and then repositioning if it was to come up. But only if I feel like, you know, it's a guarantee to go back up. Any more input? Just out of curiosity, anybody else have any questions? And then I got to log back into my deck out of my phone. So I'll show everybody one last time if you weren't here what we're in right now. And if you want to copy trade like me, just go to XRP Future Millionaire and copy trade. So these are what are open right now. Started down at the bottom. They got down like 10, 12%. So then I started opening smaller ones up here. They're all doing pretty good right now. Um... But what I do like to do is these smaller positions that are the leverage part of the positions. Once these come up 19, 20%, I'll sell these. And then um, if it goes back up to the top direction, sometimes I'll just use this money again to buy it back. So like this, it's done its job 20%, 22%. These are just these small $8 margins to lower the liquidation. So now you start closing these out so you get the higher leverage position back. 
That's just what I do. So you're trying to capitalize on little moves in between the pattern, which is fine. That's what I like to do. So then you close these. They're 17, 19. This would be the last one. This is the other 11. And then you get back to your normal position. And what did we do? We captured about seven, eight bucks on these. And now we've got this back to the normal position. We're up 12.6, 13, and 13 overall. You know, So what we were able to do when we were buying back up as we got the 17, 16, and 19, just on the smaller amounts. But that helped our numbers come close. You can see there's 11% right there we lost. But that's what we're looking at. And then it was a 17, 20, 20. So now we're back to the initial positions, guys. We're back to the initial positions here now. So, and now if we have to, if it goes back the other way, we can use the same philosophy. But right now what I focus on, and that's how easy it is on BitGet, ladies and gentlemen. It's always good to have a teaching moment where I can actually show you guys live. So you see what we did. Those positions started down, you know, we were down 10, 12% on the initial position. Then we opened up two $11 positions, a couple of $8 positions, you know, to make the liquidation higher. And then we came back down, sold them anywhere between 17 and 20%. Now the liquidation price is back where it started. Which I'm going to have to pay attention to now because I completely forgot. I'm glad I said that. 38.43 right now. Oh, yeah, but I'm at a 17x, so that's fine. But you see, I have $66 as the whole position. See, it's, it, it doesn't even read the same way. So it's so hard to explain to everybody because you will see yours exactly like mine at the end because when I start doing stuff within the position. But see how it says 51.50, even though there's 68 and 60-something. 60 but now it's starting to get to the point where we have to pay attention real closely because if we do hold this area, it's going to be a problem. We're going to have to sell out. If we hold this consolidation zone, this is where you could get the sneaky reversal because there is not a lot of volume. That is the only thing. And you could get a quick push back up. But at the same time, I'm not, I don't really want to sell because we started this cross here. And this is so far under it that. I don't want to miss out on this because I'm trying to get greedy. So I could use the same philosophy I did with those last few we sold. But that's what I do, guys. And yeah, a couple bucks here and there, but it's a percentage game. So even if I lost a lot, who cares? You know, percentage-wise, because if you look, 20% was $1.50 on the one. Like, But some people are like, oh, we lost 90%. Yeah, but it was $3. You know, that's what sometimes it turns out to be. But this is how you, I try to teach myself the patterns. This is how I do it in a long, quick leverage trades. But I just taught myself something to do in the patterns. It's, it's that simple. And it's, there's so much stuff to learn too. Like this is never ending. There's so much stuff. And I'm a proponent. If you can get used to a fast market, imagine how much easier it's going to be. Imagine how much easier it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen, when the market's not moving so fast. But right now, it's doing exactly what we're anticipating. It's doing exactly what we're looking at. And we're looking for a big drop here, ladies and gentlemen. It's just that fucking simple. That's what I'm looking for. I welcome in. I'm XRP Future Millionaire. Redwire, good evening. Finance. Um, oh, uh, with my, uh, if you're asking j Wright about what site it is, you were asking about the news, I'm pretty sure. But look here, the 200 day right now is the big concern. Is it going to break past here? Is this really making a double bottom here? Is it going to make a bearish or bullish dart leader? We're about to find out. Or is it going to blow right through? You're looking for it to break 36.04. We, we very well could tomorrow based on the CPI numbers. We really could. That's what I was talking about was the CPI. I don't know why I talked about the Fed rate hikes. It's 
see what everybody's saying if uh, anybody's talking in the telegram. No, I don't think anybody said anything so far at the later part. Only from before. Oh, that's my private channel. Yeah, not much. Not much in the last couple hours. So anybody who's watching right now, do you see this drop like I'm seeing? Oh. Oh! Let's go. We would like to see it come all the way through. But again, did it stop right? Man, our position, we got we got some good positions here. 32 and 34% right now. Positions are looking solid as hell right now, honestly. That's in USD and USDT. I opened one in each. About J-Rod, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, that was a nice little drop right there. I would love to see it break this area. Just get out of here. So basically, that's what we're looking for is to break this down. And Bitcoin broke a very big uptrend. Getting high while the market drops. It sure is, J-Rod. Yep, same here, Jam. Same here. I did my peace offering yesterday, and, you know, I'd like to think that had something to do with it. Look at Ethereum. Ethereum's starting to break down the walls here a little bit. So I'm saying. Look how accurate these patterns are. Once it broke down these walls, look what's starting to happen now. But remember, we need it to break this. We want to see this break right here. 36.09. And the scary thing is, is XRP already had a back test here. So technically it doesn't have to back test anymore. It's just, it's going to have to break through this. It needs to break this. So is it gonna? Do you guys think it's gonna break? Yes or no? Yeah, it would have to. If Bitcoin's gonna bounce this twenty, there's twenty two thousand three. Oh, it's down too far. It's this consolidation area, but this is like your last ditch effort at twenty two thousand four hundred three. It's like twenty two thousand five fifty three. I know what you're talking about. Um, but that's your last ditch effort right here. If Bitcoin's looking to hold, it's got to hold right there. I just feel a lot better being in a short than a long right here, that's all. That was the first step. Now we need it to continue. We have 36.29 on XRP. We really, really, really would love if it could break right here. It hasn't yet, though. It almost has. It came to 36.14. So let's look at the one minute real quick. Ooh. I don't know, this, this looks...
Could it have double bottomed here is the question. My target on XRP, I'm hoping to ride it all the way down to that um, 3478, but I don't know if it's going to happen. We have to pay attention here because we don't want to get caught if it's just going to come back up. You know, I'd like to get a reposition back to the top side and capitalize on these percentages. I've already cashed out on air three different ones, smaller ones that were 20% or whatever. But this one is the one that's interesting to me because... Can we break up here or are we going to come back down? So I, I just want to know, what does everybody think right now? Do you think it continues on? Or do you think we're going to end up going back up here? Do you think we bottom now? Or do you think the market's going to continue to flush? That's what I want to know. And it's a legit question here. It's a legit question as we've dumped down a little bit while we've been on air. I'm just curious what everybody thinks. It's been a very exciting stream today. Very exciting. A lot of action. Brad, where you think we have downside? Bitcoin worked hard off of 22,523. Do you think this has been the flush? Very well could. Very well could have been. We just got to watch for any signs in the one minute that we break back through. Right now, we haven't. We're trying to get one confluent or a couple. It looks like we're going to flush. I think we got to flush a little bit farther down, though, if I'm being completely honest. It looks like we could flush down to that 22,403 area or 22,553. But if it doesn't break this section, see how low the volume is? It's very possible that it could pull itself back up. Matthews, I can't disagree with that. A pull up and then a pump this or a dump this weekend. Can't disagree with that. Okay, well, what I'm seeing is a lot of difficulty in this area, so I'm going to take this risk away, and then I'm going to reevaluate when it gets back to the top. Okay, so we'll reevaluate that after. I think it was 25 and, uh, 24, 22, 17, 16, and 19 were the ones that I did on air today. So...